When the weather gets colder, do you ever feel like you just can't get as much done? Well, you might be surprised to hear that ships feel the same way. It's true, in the winter, they can't carry as much cargo as they can in the summer. Granted, it's not that the long cold evenings are getting to them, it's actually because of their load lines. On the side of a ship, you'll find a series of markings that look a little like a bullseye between some strange tree-shaped things. My guess is you've all seen them, but just not got around to working out what they're for. The same thing happens with me. I mean, I've got books on my shelf that have been there for years and I've just not got around to reading them. That was until I was contacted by this video's sponsor, Blinkist. Blinkist helps you to discover and understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. With over 5,000 titles in 27 categories, you can gain valuable knowledge and great ideas quickly. In my case, I've had Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species on my shelf for over a decade and just haven't had a chance to read it. Needless to say, it was the first title I added to my playlist, along with Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time and Michio Kaku's Physics of the Future. Blinkist breaks books down into a series of short blinks which help you to understand its key ideas in 15 minutes. It really got me thinking about evolution and how Darwin's theories could equally apply to the technological evolution of ships in an almost survival of the fittest sort of way. Ships with favourable characteristics survive through multiple generations and pass their advantageous features down to the next. It definitely inspired me for a future video topic. Anyway, click the link in my description to start your free 7 day trial with Blinkist and get 25% off of a premium membership. In the meantime though, let's jump back into this video's topic and see what the load line is all about. The main part is this solid bar with a circle in the middle and often a letter on either side. The straight line indicates a ship's primary load line which just means that you can load cargo until the water line reaches that line. The higher the line is up the side of the ship, the more cargo you can load and the more money you can make. Its position is designed to give enough clearance between the waterline and the freeboard deck as indicated by this line above the circle. Essentially, a ship is completely watertight until the freeboard deck, so the more space between the load line and the freeboard deck, the better. But remember, the lower the line, the less cargo you can hold and the less money you can make. The final bits on this circle are the letters on either side. These just show the classification society that's authorised the load line. It could be LR for Lloyd's Register, AB for the American Bureau of Shipping, BV for Bureau Veritas, VL for DNVGL, IR for the Indian Register of Shipping, NK for Class NK, or RI for the Registro Italiano Navale. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation of some of those, I'm a little hopeless at that. Anyway, to one side of the circular symbol, you'll see the load line tree with the primary branch starting at the same height as the line through the circle. Notice there's a little S on it telling us this is the summer load line. I've already said that it's the primary or default load line, it's the one that applies in most situations, but what I didn't say was that this is only the primary or default in seawater. You see, seawater is more dense than freshwater, meaning that a ship floating on its summer load line in seawater will sink lower down when loaded in freshwater, for example at a river berth. To account for that, we get the second line on our tree, the freshwater load line, indicated by the letter F. If you're in a freshwater lake and you fill your cargo holds until you reach the F line, by the time you get to the ocean, the density of the water will lift you higher up so that you'll float on your summer load line. But what if you're trading only in an area with lovely weather, say in the tropics? Surely you can get away with slightly less freeboard as the seas should be calmer. Well, you actually do get a little more allowance so you can load a bit more cargo and sit slightly deeper in the water. We call this the tropical load line and it's 1 48th of your summer draft above your summer load line. The same applies in freshwater of course, with the tropical fresh showing the freshwater equivalent. As the name implies, it's for when you're navigating in the tropics, so in this sort of region here. Naturally then, if you get extra allowance when navigating in nice weather, what about if you're in bad weather? Say, you're navigating in a more northerly or southerly latitude during the winter. Well, this is where the winter load line kicks in. In the same way that the tropical load line allowed a reduced freeboard, the winter load line requires an increased freeboard, meaning you have to load less cargo. Again, it's 1 48th of the summer draft, this time below the summer load line. The final line then sits 50 mil below that and it's called the winter North Atlantic load line. It only applies to smaller vessels, so we'll add it now just to complete the set. Essentially, during the Northern Hemisphere's summer, the top part of the world is in the summer load line zone, but in the Southern Hemisphere, we get a winter load line zone. 
From the 16th of October though, the southern winter zone becomes a summer zone. In the northern hemisphere, the North Pacific and a small area in the North Atlantic turn into a winter zone. A few weeks later, on the 1st of November, the rest of the North Atlantic joins the winter zone too. The small area that turned early retains a special status though, along with the section right below. This is where the winter North Atlantic load line applies for ships less than 100 metres in length. Of course, I've made the map quite simple here as there are a host of other small sections with different criteria and there are even some seasonal tropical zones which switch between summer and tropical at different times too. Just search for load line chart if you're interested in seeing details as unfortunately for copyright reasons I can't put one up on the screen. The point is though, during the winter ships can't carry as much cargo as they can during the summer because they need extra freeboard to account for the bad weather. There is one ship type though that gets a bit more leeway. They get another completely different set of lines in addition to the ones that we've already discussed, this time prefixed with the letter L. Well, I say completely different, but actually the L, Winter North Atlantic, is the same as the Winter North Atlantic, but with the rest of them, you do get more capacity. Some of you will have already guessed that the L stands for lumber, and it's used for ships that have a timber deck cargo. The idea is that the timber deck cargo can provide reserve buoyancy above the freeboard deck and should it be required it could easily be jettisoned. This, combined with some additional structural requirements like a raised forecastle and things, means that ships can be assigned a different, slightly more generous load line when carrying timber on deck. So that makes sense in terms of the load lines, but how does it work in practice? It's relatively simple of course when a ship is navigating within one zone, you just load to the required line and you're good to go, but what about transitioning between zones? Say you've left the tropical zone and have a destination in a winter zone, well you need to plan for it. You need to calculate how much fuel, water and stores you're going to consume on passage and make sure that by the time you reach each different zone, your ship is in compliance. Say you left the Caribbean with a cargo of tropical fruit and are destined for Canada. If your passage is in the summer, you can literally load more cargo than you could if your passage was during the winter. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Remember, go and check out the sponsor Blinkist for a 7 day free trial and 25% off a premium membership using the link in the description down below. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.